heaven, hell, hell, heaven, hell, hell. God goes down the city street picking some for heaven and others for hell. Yeah, I'm talking about the common view of predestination, the idea that God individually selects some to be with him forever and the others, well, they have no chance because they weren't chosen. Now, I know that that's just one view of predestination. Others would say God never picks people for hell. He just picks some for heaven. So that would look a bit like this, wouldn't it? Heaven, skip, 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 heaven, skip, 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 heaven. Now, where are the rest going? Hell. <laughs> it's still the same theology. If God is individually selecting people for heaven and leaving others with no choice, we've got some thinking to do, don't we? Because after all, there's some warnings in the scripture that say, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Sounds like we've got a choice to harden our hearts. If God had everything rigged ahead of time and there really was no choice, all those warnings about unbelief would just be fake. They would be God pretending as if, as if we really had a choice when we don't. And hey, what about evangelism? I mean, can we just be honest for a minute? What place would evangelism really have? Would there be an urgency? Would, be, would there be a need to persuade people if God had already pre-selected the ones who were supposed to believe anyway? Do you see, there's some holes here. There's some concerns, some issues. And so we have to ask, what is the true meaning of predestination? Because that word is in the Bible. The idea of predestining, that God had a secret plan in the Old Testament that he had predestined for the New Testament, well, that's certainly a biblical concept. But the question is, what did God predestine? Who did God predestine? It's interesting that the doctrine of predestination is really only teased out in two letters, Romans and Ephesians. And you know what these two letters have in common? They were both written to Gentile peoples, not Jews, but Gentiles. Now there's a reason for that, because the Jews, they knew, they already knew they were chosen. Since the Old Testament times, they were God's chosen people and God walked with them and rescued them out of captivity, brought them into the promised land. And well, you know the story. God rescued them and they were chosen, but the Gentiles, what was their story? Well, if you were a Gentile nation, then you were without hope and without God and without a covenant. But when the Son of Man was lifted up, he began to draw all men, not just Jews, but all men unto himself. And so the floodgates opened and God's predestined plan was actually that you Ephesians and you Romans, that you, plural, have been predestined to receive this gospel message. It's not about individual selection. In fact, when you look at the word you in Ephesians, Paul says, we this, we this, we this, and he's referring to the Jews, we Jews. And then he says, you also were destined to receive this and when you believed, you received the Holy Spirit, didn't you? Why? Because it was God's secret plan to bring in a big fat Greek wedding. That is that even those dirty Greeks, even those dirty Gentiles could become the bride of Jesus Christ now. And so in Texas, we have, we have a, an expression, it's y'all. And in fact, we can even say all y'all and that means the whole group of you. And in short, that's what the message of predestination really is. It's not about you, but not you, you, but not you. It's really that all y'all, all y'all Ephesians and all y'all Romans were predestined to this. In the Old Testament, you had nothing, but in the New Testament, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. We all become one in Jesus Christ. So. This is how it can actually be true that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The floodgates have been opened. The gospel is unleashed on all of humanity. And whoever will open that door when God comes knocking, 
They can be saved and God will live in them and be with them forever. I will call a people who were not my people, my people. It doesn't depend on the man who was running. Who was that? The Jew. It doesn't depend on the man who was running and willing. It depends on God's sovereign choice. And God's sovereign choice was to say to the Jew who was running and trying to earn and who was willing and chasing after God, you can be saved. And then he turned to the Gentile who was not even seeking after God, who wasn't chasing after Yahweh, had no covenant and no hope. And he said, you too can now be saved through Jesus Christ. And so the two became one new man. This true definition of predestination is one that unifies that brings people from all races and backgrounds, from all nations of the world. It brings us all together. The true definition of predestination is that Gentiles too have now been grafted in and included in the body of Jesus Christ. A beautiful message, not a divisive one. And the truth will always set us free.